In the 19th century, the guitar in American music was primarily a parlor instrument. It was a domestic instrument that was played mostly at home. Even in earlier periods, going all the way back to the first half of the 19th century, the guitars at that time in America were much like small classical guitars. Fancy in my fancy wood marquetry, two-piece book matched side as well as two-piece book matched back. But, and this has a five strut fan, almost exactly like the Spanish Torres design, except it precedes Torres by a decade. And we have the innovations of, of C.F. Martin, the original founder of the Martin Guitar Company, who invented X bracing, a new kind of bracing, in the um, 1840s, started to be more widely adopted in the 1850s and then after the Civil War. The first known X brace guitar was built by C.F. Martin Sr. for Madame de Goni, who was a Spanish guitarist that came to the United States in the early 1840s. For a Spanish lady, yes, and uh, I would s assume maybe some flamenco music, which uh, again, like I don't really do that, but uh, they would do more, more percussive kind of things and finger picking. Being a Spanish guitar player, she played a Spanish built guitar, which obviously C.F. Martin Sr. didn't like that. So he took the dimensions from her guitar and built a guitar with a bracing pattern that he had developed over a few years and that was X bracing. And she was a little apprehensive at first, but then she picked the guitar up and played it and then pretty much endorsed Martin Instruments for the rest of her career. And Martin Guitar has been using X bracing ever since. And pretty much anybody that builds a flat top steel string guitar now uses some form of X bracing. There's different eras of gut string too. So like this, Again, one of the earlier guitars, the neck strength uh, wasn't there yet. They didn't, they didn't know about truss rods and about you know, how to properly tension things for tighter strings. So not an outdoor instrument, not an instrument that was played in parades or you know, public settings. You know, we didn't have TVs and iPods and everything, iPads and everything back then. So uh, we would get around the fire and sing, you know, so uh, the, the parlor guitar was more meant as accompaniment for that. There was uh, two friends, Joseph Kakuku and Makia Kialakai. So this was the 1880s in Hawaii, and they just wanted a different style of playing guitar, probably wanted more volume than gut strings. And in Hawaiian music, you play the guitar flat on your lap, the strings are raised up with a steel bar. And so they took a, a guitar and probably strung it with piano wire and pretty much invented a whole new style of playing. And then when Hawaiian music became extremely popular in the United States in the 19 teens and 1920s, pretty much changed the way the guitar was played and the way the guitar sounded. Because up to that point, the majority of guitars were using gut strings. But then after Hawaiian music, I mean, steel strings became standard. Now we have steel, which is brighter sound, and it's also strung tighter, so you can hear how much higher this chord is. It's the same chord that I was playing on the other guitar. It's about four or five frets higher, probably. I'd probably have to play that chord up here on that other guitar. So they did a radical change in style of instruments they were making and the clientele that was buying them. Increasingly, with the use of steel strings, they were cheaper, they were more durable, and they were louder. 